You may have heard terms like background simulation of BGS being thrown around, but maybe you never really know exactly what it was and how it works, and how do you even manage a player faction in Elite? Well, hopefully I'm going to answer some of your questions today. Today's video is brought to you by Game Glass. Game Glass allows you to take control of your ship from a tablet or phone. Not only that, but you also get on-screen information about your ship, your targets and the world around you. So God are the days where you have no more room for your key bindings or you have to alt tap out of the game to look up market data. On top of that, Game Glass also works with Star Citizens, so follow the link in the video description and try Game Glass for free. If you like it and want more shards and features, you can buy them individually or you can subscribe to Glass Pass. Use offer code DTEA on checkout and get 5% off your first purchase. Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with Down to Earth Astronomy. So today I want to talk about BGS or the background simulation. Now this is probably one of the most complicated topics you can talk about when it comes to Elite. And therefore I'm not going to be able to do too much of a deep dive. So see this video as like an introduction, a, a little teaser for what BGS is and how you can manage a faction. And just know that there is so much more and it is so much deeper than what I'm going to be able to cover today. First of all, BGS or the background simulation is how all different factions in game, those factions you pick up missions from who own stations, how they change their state that determines what missions they offer and who controls the systems and who is in war with who. You can easily see this in game if you go to whatever system you're in, if it's a populated system, go over to your right hand panel, go over to the status tab and here you can see the individual factions, you can see the states that they're in and, and how much influence they have in a system. And BGS is all about manipulating these states to further whatever factions you want. In the D2A community, we have our own in-game faction called Terra X Astro Corp. So if this video piques your interest and you want to know more, by all means, come by the Discord server and ask all the questions you want. You can find the Discord server at discord.d2a.com. Also, if you're just interested and want to join the faction, of course, you are more than welcome. So before we begin to dive into it, you need to get a few terminologies correct here. First of all, you should know that there are in... In principle, there are two different types of factions. There are player factions and non-player factions. Now, player factions are factions that are put in the game by Frontier from the request of a group of players, an individual or a group of players. When in game, they're not really different than normal factions, but this means there is actual players behind this faction supporting it. Other than that, factions can also be native or they can be non-native to a system. A native faction is a faction that was originated from the system that they're in. That means it's their home system. This is where the faction originally come from. And non-native factions are factions who started somewhere else and then expanded into the system that you're currently in. We're going to talk about all of that here in a second. Uh, first of all, I want to talk about states. There's a lot of different states the faction can be in. And you will probably know a lot of these if you've been farming high grades. Because this could be states like war, civil war, boom. But there are many other states, again, like lockdown, famine, if you're looking for so scan for weight data, or outbreak, for instance, you're looking for pharmaceutical isolators, those kind of things. So all of these different states, well, I'm not going to dive into each state individually, all of the different states basically have a preparation timer. So that means as you are doing things in the system, that could be selling car truck data, it could be running missions, trade, um, bounty hunt, maybe even do piracy in the system and killing clean uh, targets in the system. All these actions affect the BGS state of the system and the factions that you are attacking or working. So if you do a lot of trade with the system, maybe a faction is going to go into boom. And when they do that, they're going to have an initial prepare timer. And these prepare timers uh, change from depending on the, what, what state it is. After that, they're going to go into an active state and they're going to stay active for a period of time. And after that is done, then there's going to be a small cooldown timer that's going to be a few days, one or two days, maybe three days, something like that, where they can't re-enter the same state again. So they can't go out of a state and then immediately the next day go into the same state once again. Okay, so that was a very broad overview of, of BTS, but let's try to dive into the little bit more nitty-gritty details here. And I'm going to show you some concrete examples because I think it makes it easier to understand. So I've gone over here to Inara, Inara.cz, and I've pulled up the state for Akatuvan, as you can see here, one of the systems controlled by our faction Terra X Astro. Call. I'm going to use this because there's a lot of different things happening in this system lately, so it's a really good example to show you what's going on in the system. First of all, here you can see we have a list. These are all the factions that are in the system. And down here we get graphs so we can see how much influence the different factions have over time, going back here um, to about half a year, I think. But what I want to talk about now is if you have a faction, how do you take control of a system? 
You do that through conflicts. Now, conflicts can be one of three types. It can be a civil war, a war, or an election. And that is dependent on the different states. Now, remember we talked about native and non-native factions. If we look here, you can see some of these uh, factions has little blue icons next to them. And you also see here it says Arkatuvan Vision. They all have Arkatuvan in their name. But if they have the little blue icon here, that means they're a native faction. If two native factions go into conflict, we're going to talk about how they would initiate a conflict in a second, but if two native factions go into conflict, it's a civil war, because it's native faction. If it is like it is here with the, with the blue fets and the independent Agatuvan laborer, so here we have a native and a non-native, then they go into a war. If it were... Um, uh, are commodities and blue fats, it would also have been a war because neither of them are local there, neither of them are um, a native to the system. But you can see here up here, they have not got into a war, they've got into an election. And why have they done that? They've done that because they have the same government structure. So because they're both corporate, then they don't go to a war, they go into an election. Now an election conflict is res resolved through missions mainly, and trade, that kind of thing, and not through combat. So combat has no effect on an election state, whereas it's opposite is true with a war or a civil war. In those cases, only combat has an effect or combat-related missions, but stuff like trade, cut of data, doesn't really affect uh, those kind of states. So different states are affected differently. So I just pulled up, so we only have blue fets and independent Nagatuba labor, the two guys here currently in an election. You can see how they've been bouncing up and down, they've been crossing paths a lot of time, and we could sit and we could look at all these cross and then try to figure out what was going on here. But notice here for the last couple of days, they have been completely locked at the same influence. Because what happens is, normally with two factions swap place on the list of how much influence, so if one faction overtakes the other, they're gonna go into a war, or into a conflict I should say. They are then locked in at a common influence and they're going to be locking up that influence until the conflict is resolved. That could either mean that someone in the war has won four days, because the war is running for seven days, so when you have four days victory, then you won and the war will end. As someone begins to, to win that election, that influence is then freed up, and one of the factions will then get a boost, the other one will be kicked down. You might say, oh, but why didn't they then go into a conflict here, for instance? Why did they just pass straight, um, straight past? Well, we can see that if we re-enable some of the other factions here. There we go. Now I just enable Argatuvin Vision PLC. So you can see here that while the blue fets here jumped across here, they make the jump across while the Argatuvin Vision PLC and what's the other one? Uh, Argatuvin Labor, while they were in a civil war, both native factions, so that would have been a civil war. And because they were already locked in a war, this faction were then allowed to jump past them without initiating a war. So there's a way, like right now, if we take a look at the state of the system, if somebody were to go in and say, hey, we're going to take our Agatuvan Dominion here, we're going to begin to boost them, we're going to work for them, we're going to take their missions, we're going to give them a lot of influence, they would actually be able to jump all the way up to second place without initiating a war, because all the factions above them, apart from Terrax, is currently locked in some kind of conflict and can't be locked into new conflicts. So they could do that full jump and just skip four factions and jump into second place. But other than influence, there is actually things on the line with all these conflicts, and those are assets in the system. That could be stations or installations. So let's take a few examples here. Let's take a look at uh, the Blue Fed and Argentuvan Laborer. We can go down here to the list of stations and we can see that they don't own any stations and systems. So there are no stations up for grabs in this war. We go over to the installations and settlements. We can see that independent Nagatuvan labor, they do uh, control a little outpost here. And the same with Blue Fed, they also control the surface outpost here. So that means they both have some um, assets and system that is up for grabs. So in this war, whoever wins, let's say that this is LP that wins, then LP will take over the collective mobile security station that is currently held by Agatuba Laborer, the loser of the war, and that will be flipped over to the other faction. Similarly, if the other way around, of course, if uh, Agatuba and Independent Laborer wins, then they take over that installation. Now, if there are stations up for grabs, and they have multiple stations up for grabs, then you will get uh, one of the stations owned by the faction. So in the Agatuba and PLC war and the Agatuba Commodities war here, you see Agatuba Commodities has nothing in the system. Um, not even installations. So they have nothing up. They have nothing to lose. But Vision PLC uh, stations. Oh, sorry, commodities. Sorry, Vision PLC has nothing in the system. 
Yes, Vision Pills is adopting the system. Akatumi Commodities has two stations. So that means if they lose, they will lose one of their two stations over um, to Vision PLC instead. Most importantly then is how then take over system control. You can see here that this control faction is currently controlled by us, Terra X Astro Corp. And you might think if we just re-enable us again, say, oh, because we have the largest influence. That's not always true. The controlling faction is the faction that controls the controlling station. So that's just every system has a, every populated system has a station that is the one that gives system control. If you own that station, you have system control. And those stations are relatively easy to identify. If there is a large orbital station in system, then it is the, the closest large orbital station to the star. If there's no large orbitals, then it is the closest um, medium or small outpost to the star. If there are no orbital outposts, then it goes down to large um, surface installation, and again, the one closest to the star. And then it goes down to small surface installations, if that's the only thing that's in system. We have large landing pads in system, as you can see here, but they're both surface outposts. So we're always going to start with orbital outposts. And we can see, okay, we have orbital outposts, we have two. We have um, Tuna Station here at 37 light seconds, and we have um, Gradin Plant here at 20 light seconds. So Gradin Plant is the controlling station of the system. It's owned by us, Terra X, and therefore we have system control. So if you want to take system control in a system, you need to go, you need to fight the faction, the controlling faction, you need to initiate a war with them by matching influence and then win that war to take over the station and then you have access or you have control of the system. Having control of a system doesn't give you anything special, it just will put your name on a station. But maybe one system is not enough for you. For instance, let's go back here to our Terra X. So you can see we have quite a few systems now, but a decent list. So clearly we can expand from one system to the next. So jump back into Akatuva and let's talk about how expansions work. Expansions are triggered when your faction hits 75% influence in the system. Uh, a roundabout. That's a little, it's a little finicky at the moment, but usually around 75%. When you hit that, you trigger an expansion. There'll be a little prep time, then it runs active for, uh, for some days, and after the active timer has run out, then the expansion happens, and you jump into a new system. But it's not just going to be any random system. You can actually predict it, and you can manipulate which system you're going to. So therefore, we're going to go down here, and we're going to look no, here, actually, for nearby inhabited systems. So when you do an expansion, it's going to do a little check. First check is to look for all systems in a 20 light year cube around the system you are. So that's 20 light years on like uh, 40 light years across, right? So 20 light years to either side, up and down and in a cube, not a sphere, cube. And it's going to look for a system that's suitable for expansion. You can only expand into a system that has seven factions or so less than seven factions in it. And that's not a permit locked system. There's some caveats around that. We're going to come back and we we'll talk about invasions in a second. But as a standard rule, you only expand into systems that has less than seven factions in it. So if we say if we were to begin to do an expansion from Agatuvan, let's go through the list. Here we have four factions in Haddock, but Haddock is a permit lock system. We can't go there. And we have LP. We can see here six factions. Ah, we can't go there either because we are already um, in LP. So we could go down the list seven, 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 seven. Everything is seven. We actually have some here with eight which I can talk about in a second how that happens. But we can see here that is all sevens. So there are no suitable systems for us to expand into. But let's just, as an example, say that we wanted to expand into, let's say, Aku. It's just the nearest system that we are not in at the moment. So we can open up Aku and let's see. We can't expand right now because there are seven factions. So if we want to go into the system, we need to make room for it. And we can do that by retreating out of faction. First of all, there's another player faction here, so we probably wouldn't want to go here. But... We need to make room for us, so we need to kick another faction out. First, you can't kick out native factions. So all these native factions here with the blue markers, you cannot kick them out, ever. They will stay in the system forever. We could take independent Akatuba laborer, for instance, and we could begin working against these guys. That means working for everybody else, killing their clean ships, even if you want to, uh, to take some notoriety, dropping their influence. As influence drop, they will eventually go into a retreat. Once they've been in a retreat for, I think, three days, then they will leave the system and there will be an open spot. Then we could go back to Akatuvan, 
and we could boost our influence up over the 75%, trigger that expansion, and maybe even have it triggered before so that it's it's ready to go when we do the retreat, and then we're going to jump into the system. That's just a normal expansion. We'll be put into the system with like 4-5% or influence, and then we have to build things up from there. But that's not the case because we there's no room. So if we did do an expansion right now, there is no room for us to go. And then that's when we go into an invasion instead of an expansion. See, with an invasion, you can go into systems that have seven factions. But you go into the system in your 20 light year cube. So these are all the systems listed here that has the lowest influence of a non-native faction. So if we go into, uh, let's take um, Aku again. You can see here, it actually lists all the non-native factions um, that are not like too high. Um, so we can see here, we have independent Nagatuman labor at 13%. That's also what it showed out here. We can see here independent Nagatuman labor sit here in 13%. We can also see here that all these factions here. Here we have blue fets in, in Haritari as a non-native faction sitting at 9.7. So that is lower. So we can basically just sort this by influence. And we can see that um, Amalakakan, <laughs> I don't know how to pronounce that. That is the system here where we have Green Party of Wakasaka. Wow, yeah, Green Party here <laughs> sitting at 2.2%. Let's open up the system and take a look. We can see here that here we have Green Party. They don't have the blue icon. They're not a native faction. They can't be kicked out of the system and they're sitting at 2.2%. That is currently the lowest non-native faction in our 20 light year cube. That means we will go into an invasion of this system, and what will happen when we invade is we will be put into the system as the eighth faction, and we will be put into an immediate war with Green Party. No prep times, just immediately into a war. The winner of that conflict will be allowed to stay in the system, and the loser of the conflict will be ejected. So this is all of a sudden, you go in, you find the lowest influence in your, bu in your, not your bubble, in your cube, and you fight them for taking that system. But you can see here again, if we sort the systems by range, we have the system here, all the way down here, quite far down the list, right there. You can see how many systems are between us and that system. So if just one of these factions, we can see we have a few that are quite close here, four and a half there, 3.5 there. So there's some that are really close. If these guys, if the Green Party just jumped up, let's say 2% to, uh, to 4.3, then all of a sudden we'll be going somewhere else. They will probably be going to maybe Dadal or something else. I don't know what the next one in, list, in the list was. Uh, next one in the list was Kartok. We're already there. We can't go there. Pilangu would then be the next one on the list, it seems. Uh, I don't believe we are here. Let's just check. No, we're not. So that would be the next one on the list. So you can see how just small changes for these small factions can make a huge difference to where your expansion goes. So that makes invasions a lot more difficult to control. They can be quicker because you don't have to do the initial retreat, but they are also requiring a lot of um, fine-tuning the system since you need to manage every single system in that cube. Doesn't matter with range, you need to manage every single system in order to get that, um, in order to get that uh, expansion to go where you want. So invasions are really hard to control. They can be controlled. It's not easy, but they can be done. And in general, it is more reliable to go with a, an, an expansion and free up a slot and jump in than it is to go with an invasion. Finally, here, I just want to quickly open up our Terra X page here, and I want to talk about our faction. Terra X is what I consider a public faction. That means we play open cards. Our daily orders are posted publicly on Discord. Everybody can come over and read them, uh, friend and foe. And that also means that we have very loose ties. If people are interested, we have a core group of players who are very dedicated to it and who does a ton of work for the faction. And then we have a lot of people who also more like, I come over time to time, it, we post these daily orders. It's basically like daily missions. You can go and you can say, okay, I'm gonna, today we're gonna do some trade over here and tomorrow we're gonna do some, uh, uh, exploration and in hand in some cartridge data there and we're going to run some missions and then there's a war we're going to do some fighting it's like daily missions you can come you can run some daily missions if you think it's fun and if it piques your interest there are lots of knowledgeable people out there who can answer your questions about pts 
and uh, and help you get going and we can begin to explain a little bit more about why are the orders as they are where are we working toward what's the plan so if you are interested there are plenty of opportunities to really dive into it and become very knowledgeable of this very very complex um topic in elite now i know this was maybe a little more technical complicated video and this is just scratching the surface this is really the basic of bgs that we've just gone through yet if i were to try to explain everything the that i know this would have been a multi-hour long video going into details with every single state and faction and tactics that we use and to be honest, not all of it is something I want to share publicly. But if this video has sparked your interest, I really hope I will see you around on Discord in the Terra X section. Thanks a lot for watching this video. If you did enjoy it, please give it a like and subscribe to the channel. And until next time, I will see you guys in space.